they welcome Great, and from our very comprehensive uh, coverage of the census 2019, which continues today and even in the next seven days with our very able teams, we now switch from census 2019 to beyond the scars. And my guest today is Frederick Chege. He is already with me in studio, and his is a story of gender-based violence. We are used to seeing such stories from women, but he is here to share his side of the story as a victim of a GB. Keep your feedback coming at Grace Korea KE at KTN News KE. I'll be sampling it at the end of this program. Frederick Karibusana, thank yes, you so much for joining thank us you. today. Yeah. Now, you will be sharing your story of GBV with us, but before we get to that, I want us to get a background. I want you to tell us, you know, how you met your wife, how you two got married, all that background. Okay, fine. Uh, I met my wife in Dandora, in uh, one of those countries. Uh, County markets. When was that? That was 1990, uh, at the end of 1990, mm -hmm. and then uh, we cohabited towards somewhere in the middle of 1991. Mm -hmm. So it was okay, but obviously the things I've seen later on, they were manifesting even then. But then obviously I was naive, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought these are things that people can work out, but it hasn't. It mm -hmm. has somehow gotten worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did you see then? Well, <laughs> for example, uh, incredibly excessive flirting with people, even though I was the one who was going to marry her. And uh, in that market, you'd see it's not a question of normal jealous from men or women, because that's normal. But you could see she would be very, you know, flat with the people. Uh, with men, then she would be very serious with me. Mm -hmm. So, but I thought, ah, these are these are things that we'll get over. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, and I've had to do some research. People who have such traits, it never goes away. Mm -hmm. It becomes worse, mm -hmm. and finally, it affects your marriage, your children, mm -hmm. your wealth, your future. Mm -hmm. Nothing. You you just have to learn to live with it somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, when did you decide to, you know, get married, start a family? Well. Uh, these are things that progress naturally. Yes. Uh, in 1991, year? we got a child. Mm -hmm. And just to make things clear for our viewers, I will not refer to any child by gender or by usually by age. Like, for example, first, second, or third. I'll just say a child or it, mm -hmm. uh, just to protect them yes. as a responsible uh, man. Yes. So that's how we got our child in 1991, then progressively others, of course. You got married? Married as in church? Yes. No, we didn't. We, I went through the traditional way. Mm -hmm. And uh, even as part of this story, some of the funds that had set aside to go to her parents, 380,000, somehow disappeared. Mm -hmm. I, I will come to that during the story. Okay. So I, didn't, I wasn't able to go and pay the dowry, mm -hmm. but of course I've gone and done some ceremony mm -hmm. uh, and it has been okay. Okay, yeah. okay. So uh, when we talked, you know, earlier before we had, the, we had this interview, I think it was sometime last week, mm -hmm. Frederick, you described your wife as a narcissist, a person with a high level of Very, yes, covert narcissistic uh, yeah, personality yes. disorder. I've had to conclude that uh, considering her behavior, and how she doesn't care whether we lose all property, mm -hmm. so long as she, so long as everybody thinks she's innocent, then there's nothing we can't lose. Okay. Whether okay. to go through the courts or property or children, she doesn't care. Okay. Now before we get to the story, the main story, mm -hmm. because you said there are certain traits you saw before and Absolutely. you probably ignored them. Did you see that? Did I see those the, traits? That personality disorder. At that character. time, no. At you that time. At that time, obviously being not an expert at all, uh, you just see these things and you think, this is just normal behavior from young people. Somebody's going to get over it. It doesn't count. You think once you settle with the responsibilities coming in, then you are able to overcome that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, and for all those people out there, especially men who don't want to come out openly, mm -hmm. and I believe even women go through a lot of that, uh, you just have to, if it were, if it were my choice, mm -hmm. I would suggest to the government, to the churches, to those people who conduct uh, pre-marriage counseling, 
to have a course on those on uh, on NPDs mm -hmm. so that people can know what to expect and if they see any signs of that then you call it quits mm -hmm. yes okay so let's now get to, to it the story. yes mm -hmm. so uh, where do we, because it's a rather long and complicated story uh -huh. let us start from for example where i asked her we go for hiv check uh, mm -hmm. test mm -hmm. because that's something i told you mm -hmm. now i was working for an international airline mm -hmm. uh, that is up to 1998 in the process i told my wife please can we start a company uh, because the kind of retrenchment that goes in here i might be affected and we are going to suffer mm -hmm. you know very well the airline industry is a very small market. You know, if you lose a job there, it's very unlikely to get another one because mm -hmm. the industry is so small. Mm -hmm. And that was my speciality in cargo. Mm -hmm. So I decided, no, 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 let's put up a business. We put up an agency, clearing and forwarding, which is related to the kind of mm -hmm. work I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it was, but we had, I, I took on a young man who was, at least in those days, mm -hmm. he was older than me in two, uh, by two years. Okay. So I made him my personal assistant. There was my wife, of course, as the co-director. Then there was, a, I employed a secretary, and it was going well, and it was picking up. But my friend, even with this man, a very, you see, I was working for an international airline, going all over the world. I couldn't stop her from, from flirting with this man, flirting excessively. And uh, it cost my secretary, uh, that lady who was there, a young girl, mm -hmm. very young, almost our daughter. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that's the reason she had to, to quit the job. Mm -hmm. Because at one time, this flirting led to a situation whereby the man had become even bold. Now they were so bold. Mm -hmm. he, he could even touch her hand when I'm there. And mm -hmm. the girl was like, looking at me like this, wondering what kind of... Uh, wife is this. Mm -hmm. And I pretended because she knows my character. Mm -hmm. I can't fight in front of people. Mm -hmm. I can't ask mm -hmm. because that will mean dissolving the company mm -hmm. because obviously I'll have to suck him. Mm -hmm. Don't forget there was, a there was a possibility of conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Even my boss knew I had uh, an agency I'm, uh, and I'm competing with our, yes. Yes. With our customers. Mm -hmm. Obviously I would get the suck. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of tied up. I can't act against this man. He knows my secrets. He can he can go to my bosses and expose this. Mm -hmm. My wife knows that. She also knows I need the money. We need to start to make the company stand. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? I just keep quiet. When we go home, I try to, to warn her to tell her, please stop this humiliation. She doesn't. So one day, uh, finally in the course of the event, when this girl left after having touched each other, and this is something we went even to her parents, asking her what kind of a person is she. But finally, <laughs> this man contracted some disease, lifestyle, happy lifestyle disease, mm, mm, if I may call mm, it that way. Mm. And that is what precipitated what I'm about to say. So after some time, uh, she got some kind of, just like any other human being, she got sick in the body, uh, which had nothing to do with what I have just described. It's mm -hmm. just natural mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. So we went to so many hospitals, nothing was happening. She could, nobody could diagnose her properly. Mm -hmm. Finally went to a can mm -hmm. because I was also working, I had insurance, so mm -hmm. it was no problem. Mm -hmm. So after two tests and we couldn't get anything, one doctor, a nation doctor told us, okay, young, young people in those days, obviously, we mm -hmm. were young. Mm -hmm. If you come here again next, uh, I propose you come here after about two weeks or so, let us conduct HIV test. Mm -hmm. And I was happy with that. Then I remembered, this lady has been flirting so excessively did things get out of, out of out control? Of Did they go beyond? Mm -hmm. So I said, no, 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 me, I'm not so much afraid. I like reality. Mm -hmm. So I told her, my dear, you know what? This is their medicine, they are what? We are going for HIV. Mm -hmm. She totally, totally refused. There's nothing I could do. Then when she saw I was very, I was resolute and it must happen. Mm -hmm. She waited for me. She escorted, okay, at that time I was farming. Mm -hmm. By this time I'm retrenched already mm -hmm. because I told you there were series yes. of retrenchments. Yes. So I was going to go to my farm in Kirenyaga. Then she escorted me all the way to town, left her some usual things like what she would spend. Immediately I left. I phoned her the following day because there was some money she needed. Mm -hmm. I, I phoned her and she said, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on the road. I didn't know what that on the road means. 
All, all it meant was she had taken all the children. I don't know when she arranged, when we were arguing about going for HIV test, she was organizing to take the kids without me knowing. She was looking for a house. Mm -hmm. So I went. At this point, you have all three? The all, all three kids, all three yes, children. but very, very young. Okay. One was actually about two and a half, three years okay. maximum. Okay. Uh, so I went to, when I'm uh, in my rural area, I ask her, uh, I phone her and say, no, 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 I'm on the road. Huh? I didn't know what she meant. I thought she was somewhere between town and mm -hmm. Comorock. Mm -hmm. I decided we'll talk later. Then the following day, her brother calls me. Uh, you, after about two, three days of communication, even though I sent that money, mm -hmm. Uh, you, your people are here and you're not coming for them or such other, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I told you, what do you mean? I don't get what you're talking about. Huh? Kumbe, she had already relocated. At that time, she had run away to her brother. Mm -hmm. Then she took the children to Umoja. Mm -hmm. Umoja? Like, Umoja Estates. Uh, who? Uh, for them to stay with who? To stay. She had already rented a house. Oh, okay. Without okay. me knowing okay. where she is. Okay. She had okay. just run away with the kids. Okay. Pulling them along. Yes. So when I came, I realized, oh, the house was empty, just a bed and nothing else. Okay, I said, that's all right. The reason was just HIV, and I had persuaded her. I was not going to kick her out. I told her, let's, let's ag let us agree reality. Let us see if we can live longer. These days, you don't need to worry. Mm. So she stayed there. Finally, I was called to her rural home in Nyeri. We went, I went to the parents. I asked them, why, why are we here to begin with? I don't even know what I did. I did nothing. So she was persuaded, and finally she agreed to talk. I gave my version of the story, which is basically asking her to go. We go, not her, me and her, we go to hospital mm -hmm. for a test. OK. Finally, we agreed that she will return. Did you, did you tell them why you proposed uh, no, 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 that no, she I didn't to well. take a test? Uh, that, that, uh, that element yes, of flatting, it's, it's, of course I did mention not it, but one. not in front of Oaze. I had mentioned individually to people so that they know why. Okay. But I didn't feel like it was appropriate in, the, in, the, in that yes, uh, gathering yes, to repeat it. Because everybody knew mm -hmm. what I had, my complaints were. OK. Uh, finally, we came back. My condition was still. The same. the same. We must go for a test. Mm -hmm. We went for a test. We were okay. So I don't know what she was afraid of. I wonder, sh couldn't she have gone there before, even without me knowing? Then, we, then she can agree. But she was ready to destroy the children. At this time, don't forget, she has taken the children from one of the best schools in Kayole, always posting top 10 uh, during national exams. They always produce at least a child or two at the top 10. Mm -hmm and it is very expensive. She had taken them away to go to a primary school that is run by the county government. Okay, you can't do in those days. Then I wondered, how can you risk the future of the children just because of a small thing? She doesn't care whether they, they go to school or not. Finally, she was unable, in short, to cut the story a bit, mm -hmm, to make mm -hmm, it a bit mm -hmm, shorter. Mm -hmm. She was unable to sustain herself. Mm -hmm. Her, her, her family, some of her family members, had tried to, to help her mm -hmm. uh, establish a business, which when I'm out there on my own, I also did, did uh, uh, call her and try to assist her mm -hmm. because I knew she had my children. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let her hurt them just because we have quarreled. Yeah. So finally, she came back after testing. So we start. Now, the most surprising thing, this, and this is something that you wouldn't believe it. Most people don't. So long as I am with her in my house, as my wife, I don't mean the physical distance like we are together. I mean, even in those days when I was traveling to Britain, wherever, South Africa, I was very faithful to her. That's something that most people wouldn't believe it. I never, never cheated her. And if there's anybody out there who knows I cheated her, and that is 29 years. Now, okay, now we're on 29th. Mm -hmm. If there's anybody who can say I cheated with her, don't forget I do, do patronize bars. There are very many waiters there and whatever. If there's anybody there whom I, I cheated with, I'm ready to give them 10,000 shillings because I never, never, somebody come up and say, we were with you and this is, I know it. There will be no takers for that. Secondly, in those years, Six years into our marriage, <clears throat> she sent me a Valentine card. I want to prove my, my assertion that I was very faithful to her. 
Uh, she sent me a Valentine card after about six years into our marriage, when I was still working and sort of mixing the, mm -hmm. the time frame. Mm -hmm. She sends me a card saying, thank you, my dear, for being so faithful. So she knew I was faithful. She had tried to find out and she knew I was faithful. Secondly, has, uh, okay, thirdly, because I gave out the challenge, she gave me a card, thirdly, to prove how faithful I was for all those years. Uh, one, I had, at some point in time, I had a bar. Now after retrenchment, I had a, a butchery in Jam Rescue somewhere along, a very good pub in those days. So I'm, work, I'm working there, ladies there. Mm -hmm. Since they knew I was coming, uh, since I was working at the port, they knew I had liquid cash, I could be able to spend mm -hmm. very many people. And in those days when I was young, uh, Grace, mm -hmm. I believe I was very handsome. There were people who could, <laughs> who really wanted to make a relationship with me because they can say I can spend. Mm -hmm. I was able to spend at that time. Now, they got so angry with me mm -hmm. for not succumbing to their, you know, to the advances. Mm -hmm. Now I want to show you why I can claim I was, uh, you know, I was uh, very faithful. So many years down the line, that was about 2001, she sets up a shop in Kayole. Then I happened to meet one of those ladies after a long time later, one of those ladies who was serving that bar. Mm -hmm. Those ladies, they were all seeking to see my wife. They were wondering, what kind of wife do you have? How comes you never cheat? You never want a relationship. They all wanted to see her. Mm -hmm. So when she saw, when this lady from the, talking from me, uh, to me from the balcony, when she saw me talking to my wife, we had a small shop uh, near our church, our PCA mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. somewhere there. I, I, she told me, is that your shop? I told her, oh yeah, this is my wife and ABCD. Immediately I left. She came to talk to my wife. At your, if that is your man, he's very faithful. Mm -hmm. We tried in Jam Rescue, we were unable. We were even wondering whether he functions. <laughs> so you, you, that tells you how faithful I was. Mm -hmm. But somehow it doesn't pay. You end up, and let me be clear so that I may not lie on national television. Mm -hmm. The only time I've known other people, other women beside her, mm -hmm. is when we are separated. Mm -hmm. And that will come to part two of my story. Mm -hmm. we, were separated for, we were separated for, for eight years. After the, after the AIDS, after a refusal, and she comes back, mm -hmm. we didn't go more than eight months or so. Mm -hmm. What year was that? about 2002, okay. 2002, 2003. Okay. That's when she came back. She was away for almost a year. Mm -hmm. So when we were together there, when we were together there, now <laughs> things happened. You see, uh, Grace, mm -hmm. and I want people to listen to this, people are extremely, extraordinarily malicious. Mm -hmm. Our landlord, oh, when I went there, I had gone, I had rented a house, I mm -hmm. hadn't booked. Now I have booked a house later on. Mm -hmm. But at that time, we were living in a rented house. I don't know what my wife was doing with this man. Mm -hmm. They knew, because we were living in Comorock, they knew she had gone away because obviously if she goes away, everybody knows you are all alone. Mm -hmm. this, I, meet, I meet this older man. He was older than me you know, with about 15 to 20 years there, mm -hmm. or thereabout. Mm -hmm. So this man, we meet somewhere in a, just a, in, uh, next to a home pub, mm -hmm. very close to my neighborhood, where if we shout at night, everybody will hear. Mm -hmm. So he comes, tells me, oh, so and so, how are you, oh, blah, blah. He pretends to be very drunk. Comes to me, ah, but she hasn't come, watch and I leave her alone. Even, look what she said. And I know, I felt in all, with all my, in all my heart, mm -hmm. I felt, he was saying that out of pure malice to annoy us, mm. to annoy me. Mm. So, said, ah, so she left you, leave her alone. You see that child, child this child or that? I, am, uh, I think I, uh, that's my child. He said so. Him. He said so, this mm -hmm. landlord. Mm. I looked at him. Why be so provocative? And he's, he was, he's so drunk. But I had... Uh, you see, I told you, there are things you just have to be emotionally mature. Mm -hmm. There are two things. Fight, uh, knock him down, because he was even so drunk, I could easily knock him with no effort at all. But then, everybody will wake up, because it was, a, it was approaching midnight. Mm -hmm. Everybody will hear. My children will hear. Do you mean, as a responsible person, 
you are fighting over the parenthood of a child who is just next there. So he would decide to keep quiet. I looked at him, I said, okay. Then he realized he had made his point. His knives had, had, just, driv had just been driven in. So I looked at him, I went home, I spent a day or two, then I told, I told her, Mama Flani, Kwani, what are you doing this so-and-so? He's saying this child is his, but I know that's rubbish. Let me be very, very clear, because that child was asking me, was talking about it all the way up to Form 4. This child, I know, I could not have said such a thing under any circumstances or reason, not because she's so good or I'm incapable of accusing her. Mm -hmm. It's simply because this child was born in Dandora. I'm the one who looked for where to live. She didn't know that place. She didn't know that part, that man. But this child was born in Dandora. And I'm the one who drove them all the way. I waited for them to come from school, then took them. They were two at that time. Took them to Komorok. So obviously, she was born about three to four years before we went to. She was very young. At that, uh, sorry. This child was very young by the time we went to, mm. to Komorok. So this man saying such such a thing was simply to spite me, mm -hmm. to show, to portray her as being very evil, mm -hmm. very bad. Mm -hmm. Don't forget I didn't even fight. Mm -hmm. I just asked her, oh, what were you doing? And I forgot that because we had already fought the first time about HIV. Now, it was such a short period, I didn't want another fight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I just kept quiet. I told her, okay, you know so and so is not good. You, can re you realize he, he's trying to, to put a wedge between us. How can he claim such a thing? Mm -hmm. Now this is where personality disorder comes in. You would think she would be happy with me because I didn't fight. I've just told her what the so and so has said. Instead of appreciating what does she do, hey, she takes an extremely different trajectory. Unbelievable. So while I'm waiting there, she's so annoyed. Instead of being annoyed with me, and that's something I've noticed, uh, instead of being annoyed with him, she's annoyed with me. So she goes, she goes secretly to that man's house. Don't forget, it's about that man claiming to be the father of my child. child. Obviously maliciously, nothing like that. So he goes to, she goes to this man's house. She knows because he's in the neighborhood, we all know him. So he goes to that court. At first he goes alone. I don't know what they talk. He calls him, he, ref he sort of resists and refuses. The second time, they go with my child. Now this is where I told you there is a problem. This woman twisted everything up and down. You see, the man had claimed to be this, do this uh, child's, child's father. Uh, father. Yes. This woman changes everything so that she goes and tells him, oh, you see, Mze is saying that I, um, I, I had friendship with your boy. This man had a, a stepson. Can you imagine? I didn't even accept. They are, these people have ability to create such an accusation. Mm -hmm. It knocks you off your feet. Mm -hmm. You're not able to, to, to talk about it because mm -hmm. the accusation is so different from what you had said. Mm -hmm. So what happens is they, uh, they come home. Mm -hmm. uh, th at that time, while I'm sitting there watching TV in the morning, I see people, three people, the child, the mother, and this man coming. Mm -hmm. Then I wonder, oh, what is happening? They enter. So, what do we owe your visit to? The man says, okay. Then the woman goes, oh, you told us that, uh, you told us that, uh, uh, that I, am, I have had an affair with this man's sons. Then I was dumbstruck. What are you talking about? Mm. You see, it's bad enough for him to say, He's the father of our child. Mm -hmm. And here you are, now you are twisting it. I told you, are you really normal? Is there something wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Then we talk and okay. finally so, I kick them out. Okay, let me cut you short. We need to take a break. Just hold it there. We're back with that after the break. Uh, keep your feedback coming. I see it, a lot of it. Uh, keep it coming on uh, Grace Career KE at KTN News KE. I'll be sampling it at the end of the program. We're back with Beyond the Sky.